What is up, your other Russian Villarks? Back here, the Sedins are now 37 years of age. Today's their birthdays, and the average age of the Canucks has increased by whatever 2 divided by 9 is, or whatever, something like that. Maybe 1 over 9, or something like that. But the fact of the matter is, the Sedins, of course, they're getting old. Doesn't mean that they're retiring. They wrote that heartwarming article in the Players' Tribune about how Vancouver is great and how they don't want to leave the city. And in turn, people have been asking them, hey, are you retiring? Is this why you wrote this article? But they've said to that as well, no, we're gonna play for a few more years. That's the plan, at least. So the average age of the Vancouver Canucks was 26 last season. That was notably below the league average. Now, Jim Benning is the general manager. I think everybody knows that at this point, and Jim Benning has made it very clear that the plan is to get younger. He's been saying that for years. Linden's been saying that for years. Ever since he came in, the goal was, we need to get younger. However many years ago that was, I think it was three, I'm not sure, maybe going on four, that's always been the plan. And Jim Benning, to his credit, I know some decisions that he's made have not been the best, but if there's one thing that the dude knows, it's how to get good players, how to get good young players, how to follow up on what you've been saying for the past four years. At the NHL level, the Canucks have had some good players in this preseason showing. The first one being, well, Brock Besser. I mean, everyone knows about Brock Besser. Everyone's talking about Brock Besser. Brock Besser is legit. Teams are taking notice of Besser. As the Canucks play new teams, teams are like, okay, Besser's on the ice. Defense, defense, forwards, you guys are all getting Besser. Please don't give him any room because he's pretty good. Teams are taking notice of Besser and it's showing off in the games that we're playing. We watch some of these preseason games and we see Besser getting bombarded by all these opposing defenders. Teams know that Besser's a scoring threat. He's able to take the puck, skate up along with it, cut right to the middle, make some space for himself, and with his NHL-level shot, he's able to score goals. The dude can score goals. Oh my goodness. His shot is legit NHL caliber, and his skating is good enough to the point where he's able to make space for himself. And I think that's very important when you have such a high-skilled shot like he has. The fact that he's able to give himself the space to use this NHL caliber shot legitimately makes him a good threat. For sure, he's top two or top three in the Canucks scoring if he stays with this team. He's leading the league in preseason scoring, or at least he's tied. He was leading the league with six points. Now he's tied because, you know, other teams play games. At the other side of the table, we have Jolin Chatfield. And at one point, this dude was tied for second in the league in preseason scoring with five points. This guy is good at skating. He's got great vision. He was picked up by Benning with... A random contract just coming out of nowhere. And this dude playing alongside Mikhail Sergachev, people were like, oh, he's pretty good. Then he comes in, he comes into the preseason, he comes in to the Canucks training camps. People are like, oh, okay, okay. Then all of a sudden, a few preseason games later, he's gotten very good praise by the Vancouver players, by the Vancouver fan base, because this dude, he can skate. He can make those good passes, and he's got good vision. Jalen Chatfield, I don't know if he's making the team or not, to be honest. Brock Besser probably will make the team. Chatfield, if he doesn't make the team, then Utica has a very good top pairing. If he does make the team, this guy is making such a big improvement, such a big step for a 21-year-old from that OHL level of hockey up into the NHL. You know who else has made that good step in their early 20s from college or OHL or WHL hockey right to the NHL? Ben Hutton did it. Troy Stetcher did it. If Chatfield is able to be one of these guys, then we've got a good defender on our team for the next few years. That's really exciting. At the same time, though, if he doesn't, if he makes Utica, then that's good for him as well. Utica's gonna get really good. Other NHL players that we got... 
Jake Vertanen, I mean, he looks good in some games. At his best, he's a strong skater who's got bite. He's able to sometimes make space for himself. He's able to do good things sometimes. But power play Jake isn't that strong. He stays on the blue line, he doesn't really move around a lot, his offensive awareness and vision on the power play isn't up to par to what it could be, but he's shown some good development, for sure. He's definitely not a bottom 6 AHL guy like he was last year. This dude's playing in the top 6, potentially even the top line of the Utica Comets. And, you know, that's development. He has the potential to be a middle 6 guy. Maybe in a year or two. A year if he's really successful, but two years, he's probably going to be a middle six guy. Guys like Godolbin and Reed Boucher, who recently cleared waivers, these guys have NHL-level shots, but the rest of their game and their style, it's questionable. Rodin is another guy. He needs a chance up here. Guillaume Brisebois is mentioned frequently by the Canucks management for being a good leadership character. Thatcher Demko, he will most likely be sent down to Utica to be the starter backup tandem with Richard Bachman. We got ourselves Markstrom and Nielsen in Vancouver, and Demko and Bachman in Utica. So, if we're good on injuries, we, don't, we won't need to call up anybody from the ECHL team. That's what it looks like for the foreseeable future. We got a few guys who are still on the NHL team that could make an impact. But we got guys outside the NHL who are also making an impact as well. Cole Lind of the Kelowna Rockets in the WHL, he had a 5-point game at the start of the season. He currently has 8 points. How many games? 2. He's WHL's Player of the Week. 8 points in 2 games. OHL, Michael DiPietro, a 966 save percentage and one goal against per game in three games. He is the OHL's player of the week. Jonathan Dolan will now take part in Canucks practices and play in the preseason as he has recently recovered from mono. Tramkin on his KHL team, don't even try to get me to pronounce that, he has the alternate captain logo on his jersey. Petrus Palmu is another guy. This guy was a 6th round pick here in the 2017 NHL Entry Draft. He leads the Liga in rookie scoring. Currently has 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points in 8 games. For a professional league, the highest level of hockey in Finland, just under a point per game is pretty good for a dude who's only, what, 20? Jack Rathbone continues with the captaincy for Dexter School, and Eliash Peterson. Oh my goodness, my dear heart is with Eliash Peterson. He only has three assists in three games played with the Vox Joe Lakers, but you know how many highlights I've seen of this guy on Twitter? All the gifts just keep on coming, because he's good! Some of these passes and his vision, this is Henrik Sedin prime level vision. Of course he's playing in the Swedish league. It's not the NHL. But at the same time, it's still the highest level of professional hockey in the country. The Canucks in Vancouver might be a tire fire to watch once in a while. This upcoming season is not going to be easy for us, but as we watch the Canucks in Vancouver grow, we watch Besser, we watch whoever makes the team, we watch... Brendan Gaunt, who might make the team. We watch Bo Horvat, Troy Stetcher, Ben Hutton. These Canucks who are playing in Vancouver might have a bad season. But these Canucks outside of Vancouver? Oh my goodness, they've been impressing us fans to bliss. Just look at the gifts on Twitter. Jim Benning has fulfilled what it was he said a few years ago. The goal is to get younger. Because as it stands right now, these guys who are young and who are in the organization, they look pretty good. Two CHL players of the week in the same week. Players who have the A's and the C's on their jerseys. Players who are leading leagues in rookie scoring. These guys are the guys that will be Canucks in the future. And these guys are going to help the team win. 
not now, in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video for posting on your social, like, and subscribe, and gaming, and bye. <laughs>